Hey guys, Andy here, and today we're going to be doing something a little different. Um, I decided to do the 10-year challenge that's been pretty popular on Instagram and little smatterings of it here and there on YouTube. But I decided to do it here on YouTube because, uh, for those who don't know, I've been on the platform for well over 10 years now. And I have a huge backlog of stuff. And so I was kind of looking around at some of my older videos, and I found one that I thought was really interesting from, oddly enough, almost 10 years ago. Um, it's just a month short of 10 years, and I, I didn't want to wait a month for it to be technically 10 years. Uh, and I think the video is actually pretty relevant to uh, what I'm doing right now. And it also shows a lot of just kind of where my headspace was at the time and a little bit of immaturity because at the time I was uh, like 23, going on 24, and I didn't really know what I wanted to do in my life at that point. So let's go ahead and fire up this video. And for those of you playing the home game, this is Vlog 9, Getting to Japan. So let's check it out. All right, so here we are, Vlog 9, Getting to Japan. Hey guys, it's the Andy San here. It's been a while since I've done my own vlog, but you know, I've been pretty busy as of late. Also, I got myself a nifty new haircut. Check it out. I just got it yesterday, so I mean, I definitely feel a lot better, you know, that I got the, the Jufro off of me. <laughs> it's funny. Now that I'm out and about doing my own thing, I decided to uh, just kind of let my hair on top grow out. But back then, things I really got haircut-wise were just, you know, the buzz cuts, you know, just to keep the keep the fro in check so yeah basically what's been going on is uh, i got myself a new job in a uh, technical support a couple towns away it's it doesn't pay much but it is full time and it is doing something that i'm you know fairly good at it involves computers so yeah. okay so this is kind of interesting um because i just got picked up for a new uh work at home job where i basically you know do tech support type stuff for software. So it's a little interesting, but uh, back then I had to go to an office to work. And uh, whereas here, thanks to the power of the internet, I can just work at home. And that's pretty interesting. It's kind of funny how things run in parallel. Um, and you'll see a lot of parallels uh, from this video from nearly 10 years ago to what's going on now. So I thought it was uh, pretty apropos to pick this video. You know, hey, it's a lot better than, you know, flipping burgers or, you know, being a cashier. Also, since I'm working, I'm making Max, money, Max. which is also a plus. Also, I'm uh, thinking about... Uh, this little part, and this is the kind of something a lot of people skip over, but I thought this was kind of interesting for me, was that back in the early days of YouTube, and this is one of my, like, early edited videos, too, because I didn't start editing videos until Vlog 4. So this is one of my earlier ones, and... Uh, Back then, YouTube had the video time limit, so I think you could only go up to like 10 minutes at that time. So you had to be very uh, like aggressive with how much you cut as far as like ums and ahs and dead space and all this other stuff. So you had to be very aggressive with it, so that's why there's a lot of stilted cuts in some of my earlier videos. And plus, I was, you know, I, did, I didn't uh, really like that I kind of spoke really William Shatnery. And, you know, a lot of my thoughts kind of go faster than how, how I can speak. So, you know, I, I could be like mid-sentence and then I would think of something else and be like, oh, shit, you know, how can I say that? And then I would just like stop myself and then I would just keep going. <laughs> so um, that's why some of my conversation is a little stilted sometimes. Just a little fun factoid from the Andy Sand Sam Modesto. So let's continue getting a degree online. Now, of course, there's, you know, universities like the University of Phoenix and this one that's been, you know, bugging me to no end, which is Jones International University. Parent yeah, I don't know. Jesus, could I have picked a, a worse still frame to pause on? <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know what was going on with Jones International. I'm assuming they're just uh, a random university that found out, hey, this guy's of college age, so let's email him information because I got a lot of information from uh, universities like like Jones International, but I don't even know if they're still around anymore. Apparently, I sent them requested information. I don't, I don't quite remember doing that, but they've been bugging me nonetheless. But, but instead of you know wasting my time doing something like that, I've been thinking about you know taking the easy way out and uh, buying a degree online. But wait, Andy, those are all scams. Yeah, probably, but it would still be nice to have. You know, if anything, it's just like a novelty. The main reason I want to buy. Before we go any further with this. 
let me just put out a, a very obvious <laughs> disclaimer. Um, please don't buy degrees online. It, you know, it, it's, I don't know officially the legality of doing that, but if you do get caught doing it, I would assume at least you would lose your job that you use those credentials to get into. So, yeah, don't be doing this kind of stuff. Um, <laughs> um, you know, 23-year-old Andy was young, dumb, and just wanted to get out to Japan. So, yeah, um, don't do stupid, kids. Don't be stupid. Go to school. <laughs> anyway, let's continue here. Why my degree online is so I can uh, teach English in Japan because basically that's that's the main thing that's been holding me back is the fact that I don't have a four-year degree. I mean that's pretty much the only requirement in order to teach English in Japan. It's funny, man. Like you know, I've been at this whole like getting out to Japan thing for so fucking long. You know, it wasn't until 2013 when I actually first stepped foot onto Japan, and it's kind of funny now, like ten years. You know, after this video has been made, or about a month short, 10 years, time's recording, that uh, I'm going to be going back to Japan this year. I've been at this Japan thing for a long time, guys. Good things come to those who wait. Or to get a visa, a working visa anyway, is to have a four-year degree. It doesn't matter, you know, what the subject could be in, as long as you have that four-year degree. I was thinking about going to a Bowling Green... State University and uh, learning some Japanese so that way I could better, you know, communicate with my customers instead of just talking in English. <laughs> That's kind of funny because uh, as as I've learned more about uh, teaching English in Japan, uh, both from like reading stuff online and talking with my friends that teach English out there, I learned more and more that because like I could see where my head was at that point. You know, it's like I want to cater to my students who I called customers. I guess. <laughs> um, I wanted to cater more to them by having them learn English by me speaking Japanese and explaining them to them things, but that's not how a lot of language learning is done in Japan. They just want you, depending on the company and stuff you work for, they probably want you to just speak entirely in English in front of your students. Um, they definitely frown upon you using Japanese, well, in front of your students anyway. Um, if you're talking with teachers and stuff in the teacher's lounge or whatever, or the office, you know, that's fine. But uh, talking with your students in Japanese, in most cases, is considered a, a no. <laughs> so I just wanted to uh, let you guys know about that. All the time. And also, you know, to kind of get myself, you know, around town without, you know, fumbling through, you know, sign language and you know, gestures and I want to go here and shit like that. And plus, you know, I'm just, I'm really interested in the Japanese language. Another thing, and I know I'm pausing the video a lot here, guys, but there's a lot of little points and stuff to uh, to add onto this video. And you don't have to worry about the YouTube time limit anymore, so fuck it, right? <laughs> One thing I've learned from actually being out in Japan versus, you know, just learning about stuff secondhand, like uh, 2009 Andy was, was that, you know, you can get by in Japan with gestures and, like, kind of charade, sign language sort of deals. If you go to bigger towns and stuff, uh, they'll typically have a lot of English... So, like, you'll have the thing written in Japanese, and then below it'll have the English translation or whatever. And, you know, if you go to a big, big place like Tokyo, you could get by just fine without learning pretty much any Japanese. As far as, like, going about your daily life, you know, going to the store, getting stuff, um, navigating the train system, stuff like that. Um, you can get by without learning pretty much any Japanese. In fact, a lot of foreigners end up not learning Japanese. However, comma, I will add that the more Japanese you know, the better, because you'll be able to communicate with people, you'll make a lot more friends if you know Japanese, and you won't be constantly stuck in this uh, English bubble. So I would definitely recommend you learning Japanese, but I just want to say you can get by not knowing any Japanese as far as like, you know, being able to survive and get stuff and stuff. But if you want to really thrive in Japan, get friends and learn more about Japanese culture and just experience more of Japan, then I can't recommend learning Japanese enough. And even even if you know just a little bit of Japanese, a little goes a long way in Japan. So even if you just sputter out, even just a simple like, sumimasen, you know, a lot of people, 
lot of Japanese people, you know, just their eyes light up. They're like, eh, you know, <laughs> and they're like way more willing to help you. Um, I got a bunch of stories of that that I might be getting into in a, in a future Andy Before Japan episode. So uh, keep an eye out for that. And, you know, I've been watching, you know, a lot of anime and, you know, I don't, I know what you're going to say. Andy, you can't learn Japanese by watching anime. Well, yeah, that's true. I'm, I mean, I do some learning on the side also. I got some videos and some books and stuff, but I just kind of follow what's going on in anime as like, you know, examples, more or less. Just kind of like as, you know, to figure out, okay, he says this here and that there. That word means this, and he uses it here, and just kind of dissecting things. And also trying to figure out how, what casual Japanese would be, so I don't end up, you know, talking like a robot when I get to Japan. Basically, I was kind of talking about immersion, which is like age at light, basically, where you're just listening to a lot of the foreign language just to get an idea of the flow of it and you know if you're reading subtitles and stuff like that you can kind of you know a lot of shows that you know if they're talking about something they end up repeating what that is a lot and you know i noticed that you know watching anime and you know even watching like live action shows and stuff like that you know if you see a certain word or something mentioned a lot of times you'll start to to recognize the patterns and stuff but you know that being said immersion can only get you so far you know you won't be able to learn the the grammar and the the basic mechanics of any language not just japanese but any language unless you're actually like sit down and actually learn it learn it you know go through a book or whatever and learn the basic structure of the language and then from there you know you can use immersion to learn new words and you can also learn just the, the very subtle uh, nuances of the language but uh, yeah you, can, you definitely can't learn by doing just one of those things I think it's best to have a broader approach and use both of them but one's not better than the other I just think that if used together it'll give you a better overall picture of you know not only what the words mean, but also how they're arranged and in what context you can use them in. So that's my little learn language kids uh, speech. <laughs> and, you know, using very Gaijin-esque phrases. Gaijin meaning a foreigner. And uh, I've also been watching a lot of uh, foreigners Ooh. in Japan oh, this on is, this YouTube. Is gonna be good. Mostly uh, Tokyo Kuni. He Okay, this is going to be good, guys. I, I do name drop some of my uh, YouTube heroes here. He is definitely my favorite vlogger of all time. I mean, not just, you know, guy in Japan vlogging, but just vlogger of all time. I mean, his, his vlogs are not only funny, but they're very, very informative about what it takes to live in Japan and to work in Japan. And just, you know, little nuances and things that they don't quite explain in, in you know, say, like a tourist brochure or something along those lines. Just little Japanisms or whatever. And yeah, I, I definitely 100%, even 10 years after the fact, I definitely agree, you know. Tokyo Kuni, Kevin Kuni, he continues to be one of my main inspirations to stay on the platform, you know, even after all this time. And, you know, even if you look at some of his videos now, I mean, granted, they, they do look a bit dated now just because, you know, it's not in the super crisp, like 1080p, 60 frames a second, or 4K, 60 or anything like that just the rawness and just the whole like if it was just him camera japan you know there was no like i'm sure to like comment and subscribe at the end of the video or any of that other stuff um so be sure to like comment and subscribe to this video and uh i've also been watching a couple others uh tokyo swan yes. although he's not in japan anymore i've been watching you know several of his videos uh tikyo sam not my favorite but he's 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 there for a good laugh so I hope Sam's not watching this video. <laughs> oh, man. I love you, Sam. I do. I really do. But this was like circa 2009 Tikio Sam, so just just keep that in mind, okay? Uh, but um, getting back to Tokyo Swan, uh, Roger Swan, for those who don't know, he tragically passed away uh, about a year later after this video was made um, when he returned to Japan uh, to teach English uh, as part of the JET program. And it was uh, a really, really tragic time for the, uh, the J-Vlogging community. Um, I don't think there's been an event quite like that since, uh, thankfully. Um, but 
I think his death did bring a lot of us closer together. It makes things a lot more interesting, you know, looking back at his videos now and just kind of see the progression he made, the growth he made as a person. You know, you watch a lot of his early Tokyo Swan episodes where he's just kind of nervous and humming and hawing and stuff. And then you look at some of the later ones in the Tokyo Swan series. And when he returns to Japan for Iwate Swan, you can see that his editing and everything, his camera quality, everything production-wise went up. And granted, you know, it's nearly 10 years after his death, so his videos do look pretty dated, you know, by today's standards anyway. But, you know, again, like with Kevin, there was nothing pretentious about him. He was just dude with a camera, you know, speaking to his passions about Japan. And even though it's been nearly 10 years since his death, um, I still watch his videos regularly to get inspiration, to get that that feeling of like, wow, this is really cool. So I definitely recommend you guys checking all them channels out. So anyway, let's continue. So uh, I occasionally watch Give Me a Break Man, but I kind of feel he's going towards like, you know, the sexy Phil kind of direction where he just is more like Japandering in a sense, kind of. You know, it's not that I hate him, but I just, I just don't like him. <laughs> Then there's uh, Lensei, I think that's how you pronounce his name. He he vlogs on and off, and he also tends, you know, to delete some of his shit, which I'm not a big fan of. I do not want to delete any of my vlogs. Yeah, we're not going to talk about Gimme Breakman on this channel. Don't want to start up any drama, you know. But uh, Lensei was another uh, vlogger that I really enjoyed. Um, he was living, I think he's still out in Japan, actually, but he deleted his channel because he got a job working for Sony, so uh, he had to delete all his shit, which was pretty spectacular. But uh, yeah, you gotta do what you gotta do when you work for a big company like Sony. So it's a Sony. Although speaking of which, um, I'm kind of debating between something. I oh, I almost forgot. Sorry, <laughs> I know I just stopped the video, but uh, I forgot about the the last point I was making, which was deleting vlogs, which is like hella ironic, considered considering I've deleted vlogs, move them around to different channels before it's just saying fuck it and opening this channel, you know, my Andy-san channel up as my archive channel. So, yeah, the irony is strong in this video, let me tell you. I've been using, you know, the name The Andy-san for a while. It wasn't my first name. Originally, I went with Andy-san. I found that it's, you know, kind of a search engine nightmare. So I decided to make it a little more unique by adding, you know, the the, the the, <laughs> in front of it, making The Andy-san. So that way you know it's me and not some other Andy-san. Or Andy San Dimas, who I heard here. It's very, very hot. So I... <laughs> Jesus Christ. Who I hear is very, very hot. <laughs> oh my god. Sorry. Ugh. 2009 Andy was, uh, was a different beast, let me tell you. But uh, yeah, so I decided to switch from Andy San to The Andy San because I would end up in search results for Andy Sandemus, who is a porn star. She does a lot of weird fetishy type videos, which you can find on YouTube. Yay, advertiser friendly. <laughs> I made a YouTube account called The Andy Son. I haven't put anything up on it yet, but I'm kind of debating between, you know, just switching to that account and just kind of, you know, letting the whole Andy Son account kind of go. I won't delete anything, definitely not, but just not update anything. I'm kind of annoyed by people who account hop, but I mean, I'm kind of doing it for a, a good reason, just because it's better for people to search me through The Andy Son instead of Andy Son. And plus, you know, if, if all else fails, I could just switch back. You know, no big deal. Uh, tell me what you guys think in the comments below, and uh, we'll go from there. I don't really have too much else to talk about, because, you know, I don't want to make this vlog, like, really super long. So, um, that's pretty much it. So, uh, I'll see you guys later. This is the Andy Son, signing out. You guys have a great effing day. So, yeah, that was an interesting little uh, trip down memory lane, uh, doing the little 10-year challenge thing. What'd you guys think of the video? Um, like to hear your thoughts in the comments down below in the boobity boops. And uh, with that said, guys, this is the Andy Son. Sign for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.